Okay, folks, we are live here with our second segment of Quantum Leap with uh, Hugh Groman, uh, a, a favorite guest of ours. Let me make sure I'm not muted here, but uh, okay, should be able to hear me. You guys can hear me, it sounds like. Um, Hugh, welcome back. And I'd, uh, I'll first let um, Corey do an introduction and to himself. And if you don't mind just telling us how you guys know each other, because I know when we first had Hugh on, you were like, you got to talk to Hugh. And I did. And I see why he's a he's a great guy in a lot of ways, as we're going to get into. Uh, yeah. Hey, everyone. Corey Knott here. Uh, <clears throat> business coach with Take Wing Coaching. And let's see, I, I Hugh and I grew up near each other. I, I want to say, did you live on Glorietta, Hugh? Was it? I, I kind of picked your house. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I just don't quite remember, you know, the, all the neighborhood roads, but you know, when you ride your bicycle around, it's kind of a little different, but yeah, we were, uh, I, I kind of was sandwiched in between, you know, Hugh at a slightly younger age and Nina was a slightly older. And uh, so knew them through elementary and someone in high school too. And then we ran into each other again when I first heard about BNI, somebody, uh, Don Lyons called me and said, hey, you know, go check out this chapter in Oakland, Berkeley. It's, it's just kind of getting started or rolling and everything. And I show up and there's Hugh. I hadn't seen him in, I don't know, 15, 20 years. And, and, and he was an active member and still is today. Yeah. So am I. <laughs> no, agreed. And if you haven't been to his chapter, he has a very impressive B and I chapter, you want to come visit in the Piedmont area of central Oakland and little tit but Pied Piedmont's actually its own city. So it's a little island in, in the Oakland, um, Alameda County, I should say, and the city of Oakland. But um, Hugh, I think really exemplifies a lot of these things that we go on on this show in terms of, you know, vision and core values and this service mentality and he's really built a successful catering business on it and i know it hasn't been easy here during this um pandemic but if you don't mind just telling us a little bit about yourself and where you are today and in in business and uh, what you do thanks yeah i'm hugh groman um my company is called the hugh groman group because we have three divisions uh to the company um and uh, we do full service catering and event planning. We do high-end party platter delivery. And then we have Phil's Sliders Catering, um, which is like a casual sliders and potato tots catering that is um, very specific and standardized and, and affordable for fundraisers and kid events and you know casual happy hours. So um, yeah, and uh, been in the food business my whole life since I was 15 years old and I just turned 51. So that's a good 36 years. And um, yeah. And uh, you know, being in the catering and events world, we, we had our particular challenges um, over the last two years. And my strategy was essentially keep busy, try to lose as little money as possible. Although that really wasn't the strategy. The strategy was actually lose, lose a bunch of money um, and then hope that the government gives you some, which they did give me a good chunk. Um, so that helped quite a bit. And just keep my team together, keep my team together, keep my team together. Because I've spent 20 years building a great, great team. A lot of people have been with me for 15 to 20 years. And those people are not replaceable. So I just figured, go forward in some somewhat blind faith that things would work themselves out. And the good news is I still have a big team. And so when we went from busy last year to dead in our tracks for with Omicron for two months, and then now we're like busier than we've ever, ever, ever been. And thankfully I have a team. So we're able to handle the business. Right. Great. And I have seen some of your great posts about how you've been featured on some of the local news channels, uh, fun things that you do with um, food. I don't know. Could you just share a tidbit or two with, about that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I love performing. I've always been kind of a performer and I set an intention that I wanted to do like local TV or food, you know, food TV. And through a series of decisions and strategies, you know, I've, I, I um, ended up on KTVU um, 
and it went really well. And they've had me back every month for about four or five years. Um, and I really enjoy it. It's fun. I love doing live TV. I love just, um, kind of the challenge of being in the moment and being present and, um, you know, just kind of, it's like, you're, you have to be both aware that you're, um, you're on camera and at the same time, completely uh, unselfconscious about it. So it's this like weird balance of like, I'm aware that I'm being seen, I'm aware the camera's there, but I, at the same time, I have to just then forget all about it and just focus on the host and enjoy myself. So it's an interesting experience. Yeah, no, yeah, well put. I, I, I <laughs> um, That's a great anecdote. And um, what would you say makes you unique as a caterer in terms of your style of your dishes? And I know you, you do so many different types of food, but, um, may, and maybe that's what makes you unique is that um, you want it, you got it, but you do kind of have this lower end type, uh, like burgers, sliders, uh, for kind of a business reception, but then you also do weddings and other business events. If you don't mind just telling us a little bit about your range. there. Sure. Yeah. I mean, what makes us unique? I'm not even sure any of us are unique in the end. Um, I think what sets us apart there are a few things. Um, being a chef owned catering company, I think is important um, because I'm passionate about food. I have high standards about food and I really know what I like and I don't like, and that's important. So, you know, we are passionate about food. And then David, who's been the chef of the company for 15 years, since I kind of got to the point where I didn't, it what didn't make sense for me to be in the kitchen cooking all day, every day. Um, he's got very high standards. He's an excellent chef. So, you know, we I get along well and, and I feel very safe in his hands knowing that his, he has very high standards and he's really good at what he does. Um, so being chef owned is one thing. Um, and then just a really simple and clear focus on quality and service. Um, you know, the, the highest quality wherever we can, even if it's, uh, uh, on the simpler end with the sliders and potato tots all the way up to like a really lavish event for, you know, it costs a thousand dollars a person to do some of these crazy events that we've been able lucky enough to do, but just focus on quality and service and simplicity. And, and the thing that I've realized in the last few years is above all responsiveness is like the most important thing. People want you to respond to their emails, their texts, their phone calls, and they want it quick because as soon as they wait to hear from you, they start to get nervous. Can I trust that these people are going to come through for me? And I don't want nervous clients. So responsiveness is key. Yeah, great to hear. I know you set such a high standard in so many of those areas and, and as we talk about and I look at other business owners I, I see why you're as successful as you are and especially what you said about you have had that team with you for so long that you have such great folks so uh, that kind of live this every day and all the projects and that's what really makes you stand out I see and you know from afar just watching what you do and how other people talk about your business and things and um, with that I'm going to actually skip over this not to dwell on the COVID, let's try to a little bit leave that in the rear view. I'm going to switch over to to Corey for a couple of questions. Fair, yeah, we talk, we talk a lot about you know the why, the purpose, the reasons for being in business, and I think you know the COVID environment, especially for anybody in service, is put put a lot of pressure on the reasons for staying in business, right? You know, it's like how am I going to survive this this situation? And and even for those who got really busy during COVID, it it can be, you know, high stress and why do I stay in this? So, no matter what your situation was, it was definitely a huge obstacle for almost everyone. So, overcoming those obstacles is is a lot of the reasons like, you know, we connect to why we do what we do and most successful business owners are a pretty good understanding of that. So, why would you say you do what you do, you? What, what got you through all that and keeps you going? I mean, I think the number one is just the relationships that I get to have with the people I work with and the people we work for. Right. Um, that's probably, uh oh, am I getting, am I freezing? You're frozen. <laughs> okay, there. Kind of, yeah, there um, we go. The, the relationships I get to have with the people that I, uh, that I work with and the people that we work for. Um, probably my number one. And then also being, getting to be the owner 
you know, there's a lot of things that are hard about being the owner, but I get to make the decisions and I get to be creative whenever I want to. And that is huge for me. Um, I have, in my journey towards owning my own business, I, I looked around and I realized nobody's paying you to be creative. They're paying you to show up and get a job done. If right. you want to be creative, you're going to have to be pretty high up in the company. Right. So that is a something that means so much to me. So I, the a chance to be creative, the chance to evolve with the company as the company grows, and then the relationships I get to have with the people I work with and for. Yeah, I remember I had a boss many, many, many years ago when I kind of was just kind of starting my project management career and was sort of a mentor for me. And, and it was a very small company we're working for and we we're moving all over the place. And, and he said, you know, what I love about working for these really small companies, I can stick my nose into everything. And, you know, that kind of reminded me, that's one of the reasons I liked being a business owner too, is you get, you get to be involved in everything and rather than just being told what to do and shut up when they tell you to, um, but even a small company can help with that. And so what does it look like to work with a client? How do you scope out an event? And, you know, I think some of us have, you know, hired caterers for a wedding and things like that, but there's so many other things going on. So. Well, it goes a lot of different ways. Uh, it goes a lot of different ways. A friend of mine put it this way. People tell us a story and then we figure out what they really need. Mm. And again, I'm frozen. There we go. Okay, I'm back. So, um, so people come at us in all kinds of ways. Um, sometimes they come at us with like, you know, this is a business thing. This is the date. This is the budget from five to seven. You know, this is what we were trying to achieve. You know, can you make this easy for us? We love that. Some people come at us with, we are having this event and we would like a chicken dish, some string beans, some bread rolls, a cheese platter. That's not my favorite. It's like they're, they don't know a lot about food, but they're kind of telling us what to do from the beginning. And, um, you know, it's usually a red flag that that might not be our ideal client because we want to be able to bring our expertise to the table. And we want to be able to make something easy for people. It's a luxury service. Um, so we want people who are going, who are passionate about food, who want to take advantage of our sort of ideas and skills and um, talents. Um, and so, and everything in between, I mean, people come up and say, well, I'm getting married in three years. And I'm like, Ugh, I don't know if I want to be do dealing with this for three years. Um, <clears throat> How about six months? Um, so, so we, you know, people come at us all kinds of ways. So then we write them a proposal. You know, we hear what they have to say. We ask a bunch of questions. We write them a proposal. And if they like the proposal and they like what it costs, or at least they can stomach what it costs, then we um, set up a meeting in person at the venue. And that way we can talk about the, the whole vision for the party. You know, where do we put the bar? Where do we put the food? What do you want this to look like? What are we going to bring in in terms of linens and flowers? Do you need some music? What are all the elements, the lighting that we need to bring in to have this party feel a certain way for you and your guests? So, so it sounds like there's even more of an element too of you know some event management and, and set up. So it's not just catering, but you're actually doing some party planning and so on too. Absolutely. Or that in. Yeah. We actually do catering and event planning. And I'm frozen again. And um, we can hear you. We got audio though, so don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, we can do, we do catering and event planning. And we say that all the time, but it doesn't really sink in until people actually work with us and realize, oh, you can, we can arrange the tent. We can arrange the stage. We can arrange a band for you. We can arrange, we have our own in-house florals. We have a liquor license. So we do a lot of event planning. What, we what don't, I was going to say, what made you decide to also do event planning? What was kind of... Oh, it's just natural. I mean, it's part of catering. There's this like, there's this kind of continuum, right? And caterers handle some of that. And then if you're an event planner, you know, you handle, there's some overlap, but there are some things that we don't necessarily do. If you're having like a week long conference and you want to deal with like, I don't know, like, you know, badges and... Oh, your thing, yeah. <laughs> you know, like we we can do a lot of that, but we're not going to do all that event planning. So there is 
some overlap between us and event planners, but there's definitely stuff we do that event planners don't do. And there's stuff that event planners do that we don't do. Yeah. yeah. I, I, let me just say some, a couple of tidbits here, Corey. Um, if, if you haven't followed Hugh on social media, you really see this with his events. And I know you've seen it too, Corey, that the ambiance that he creates is just amazing. The whole feel of, you know, and I think some of that's from the clients that you find to your ideal clients. So when you add what you do to what they want, it creates this whole very special event. And you really see that and you're a big piece of that. And I love also what you said about, you know, people aren't your ideal client who kind of don't trust you to do what you do well, you know, it's for example, you know, I want you to make some, you know, hamburger helper and maybe some frozen <laughs> French fries or something, you know, and it's like, you know, that's not really what I do, you know, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'll make something way better with than that. And I, I think I get that with video too, a lot of the time where you end up, you know, you know, having to write kind of a cheap novel when, you know, you're really talking about like Tale of Two Cities or something like that, you know, so. Um, yeah, or, yeah, it's, it's hard when people, sort of have a vision but don't really know what they're talking about it's it's hard yeah well there are sandwich caterers you can always find those people if that's what you want to do you know sure. <laughs> right <laughs> um and and sometimes you need that for an event where you have a very limited budget yeah. but yeah I, I i've had i was just thinking i should come visit your chapter now that you're meeting again in person are you are you catering are you catering your chapter be catering the lunch or? yeah come on out april 6th is our first in-person meeting Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's, hey, I'll join you out there, Corey. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't visited a BNI chapter, go visit Hughes group because you'll get a chance. I mean, you know, they'll, they'll charge you for it, but uh, it's worth it. Yeah. But it's, uh, and, and he does a good production too. I mean, it's not just the food, you know, slapped on the table as some BNI groups do. It's, it's well laid out and always yeah. plenty of it too, which is nice. Yeah, if I'm going to be doing the catering for my BNI group, I want to make sure I make a good impression. That's how BNI works, you know. Yeah, it's always a good impression. Yeah. Um, um, you kind of give us an idea of your ideal client, and and I've been actually looking at your website too, which uh, is quite amazing, very impressive. Which site are you on? We have four websites. Oh, oh gosh, okay, I don't know. I I wasn't. I don't even know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on my screen anymore so um but it has a lot of event stuff so it's well worth looking at just in terms of you know some creative ideas and so on but uh, is there anything else you can tell us about what would make an ideal client for you yeah i mean for me what the ideal client is is people who want it to be wonderful and people who want us to make it easy for them that's what i want let me make it easy for you dear god please you know it's it's like it might be casual, it might be high budget, it might be medium budget, um, but just let us make it easy for you because we can do it. We know what to do, you know, but people who second guess things a lot, not my favorite. People right. who are not, or are anxious and not trusting. Of course, there's a lot of anxious people planning events, but, you know, um, if someone's really anxious and just does not trust us at all, I mean, that's on us too. We have to figure out how to earn their trust, but you know, people who are trusting and just like, they don't have time, just, you know, here's what I need. Here's my priorities. Take the ball and run with it. That's great. Yeah, I like that. I like that indicator too, right? Just trust them to do what's going to be good, <clears throat> which I think we should. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, we are a bit early if, if there's any follow-up, um, Corey, you had, a, or Hugh, if you want to say anything more about what you're looking at now i'm curious of what the summer season is looking like <laughs> so you know i mean we're we're kind of coming out of this i know things oh are exploding God. and you know i'm hoping to have a few parties myself and then you know nothing huge but just you know be nice to have people around again <laughs> yeah well it's i mean it, basically what happened is we were we were dead in the tr dead in the water for about two months and then about four, three or four weeks ago, the phone started ringing and then it started ringing and ringing and ringing and the emails are coming in and coming in and coming in and coming in. And we're getting 20 to 40 inquiries every day. Wow. Yeah. So our team is trying to keep up with proposal writing and booking. March booked up, you know, it was, it's all last minute. We were starting with no runway. There was right. like months of like January and February of planning. Oh, I'm planning an event in March. Everyone was like, we don't know what's going to happen in March. So people were just frozen. 
And then in mid-February, people started to say, hey, maybe this is going to be easier to throw events. So now it's just, we're kind of, we're, we, we had a meeting today and it was almost like a panic. Like people are like, we need more help. And I'm like, it's going to be fine. And it's like, yeah, maybe we need to, we really do need more help. Um, we're all kind of stressing out because it's so, got so busy. But yeah, May, J- April is looking like it will be as busy as Christmas. Um, June, May, uh, April, May, June, all probably as busy as Christmas. And we'll just figure it out from there. And, and if the numbers go up again, then we'll have to, uh, you know, some other nightmare. But for now, it's looking good for now. And, and food supplies and other things aren't really affecting you much or? Oh, food, you know, I'm sure, you know, food has gotten more expensive. So our profit margins are t- tighter and tighter. Uh, labor market is tight. So we definitely have a real challenge right in this moment of like, okay, we got to hire some more people. Um, and um and uh, yeah, so that those are the challenges that face us. But we're not going. We 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 do have a core team of people. We just need to hire some more. Sure. Yeah. I know. You got a you got a great group over there. Just was kind of curious about the business environment and. That's, yeah. Uh, no. It's. I mean, every. And I'm not. I, I like to think I'm special, but every caterer right now is out, going out of their minds. The whole industry has just exploded. In a crazy, crazy way. Yeah. So. No. That's. I'm glad that we got to that because I, I, I help kind of plan and promote events for rotary and we do i feel like this pent up demand that is kind of um you know looks like it started a little bit a little bit earlier in your industry but we're really seeing given the omicron on the downward and spring this boom of people want to do stuff and they're tired (laughs) tired of not doing anything so yeah yeah it's good well great well such a timely time to have you on then and they may not be able to book you for a few months but at least they'll know about you and don't hesitate to reach out to Hugh to see how they can be helped I will put all the links to all your websites on there if you have any other links you want me to put feel free to send them to me yeah and as my uh, realtor friends say we're never too busy for your referrals beautiful and uh yeah Instagram would be the best thing to follow us Hugh Groman um what is it Hugh Groman group okay Okay, great. Maybe Corey and I will see you early next month. We'll see. I'm on April 6th. All right. (laughs) Well, thanks everyone for uh, tuning in to Hugh Groman and the Hugh Groman group. And uh, thanks, Corey. We'll be seeing seeing everybody after our uh, sabbatical. All right. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Hugh. Great work.